met. Sayla. Captain Ibrahim Trora, the interim president of Burkina Faso, made a stirring speech on behalf of increased sovereignty, food security, and appreciation of Africa's historical contributions on July 28 at the second Russia-Africa Economic and Humanitarian Forum. Many who heard his stirring speech compared him to Thomas Sankara, the eminent pan-Africanist leader of Burkina Faso. They claimed that Trora's words reflected the intensity and dedication to African independence and prosperity that marked Sankara's ideology. In his speech to the nation's young, he made it clear that he intended to retake the Burkina Faso gold mines and guarantee that the gold was exploited properly so that it would benefit the country's citizens. Looking at the gold mining industry of Burkina Faso, there's a lot of promise. Gold mining often plays a significant role in Burkina Faso's economy. Since 2012, Burkina Faso has become Africa's fourth biggest producer of gold. Production of mineral commodities is limited to cement, dolomite, gold, granite, marble, phosphate rock, pumice, other volcanic materials, and salt. Unfortunately, child slavery is commonplace in the gold industry. Mining accidents are also not uncommon, with one of the most prominent cases being when eight miners were trapped underground in the Canadian-owned zinc mine in Perco by flood waters. The unexpected flooding happened during dry season at Burkina Faso on 16 April 2022. Hello and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on post notifications in order not to miss out on any of our videos. In this video, we'll be looking at how Africa's youngest interim president, Ibrahim Tror, plans to reclaim Burkina Faso gold and gold mines. The French military personnel helping to quell the insurrection in Burkina Faso were evacuated from the country by Tror's administration in February 2023. He then backed up the diversification of Burkina Faso's international connections by saying, we really want to look at other horizons, because we want win-win partnerships. Soon after, the governments of Traoré and Mali extended invitations to Guinea and declared support for a federation. All three nations are governed by military juntas, and if they united, they would become the greatest military junta-ruled nation. Traoré developed deeper ties with Turkey and Russia to take the role of French military assistance. As rebel forces proceeded to speed up their attacks in April, Assen ordered a general mobilization of the populace to aid the armed forces. Traoré publicly vowed to retake all rebel-held territory, and stated that talks would not begin until the insurgency had been severely degraded. The anticipated return of democracy for 2024 was questioned by Trora the following month, who claimed that elections could not be held until the militants had been driven back and the security situation had been strengthened. Disgruntled military personnel made a failed attempt to remove Trora on September 26. A new gold mine will be operated by Norgold, a Russian mining corporation, according to a permit from the Burkina Faso government. The four-year operation permission is for a place that is in the northern central region. Three gold mines in the nation's north are already run by the Russian business. Since 2015, jihadist violence has been a problem at both locations, carried out by organizations linked to the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda. A total of 70 tons of gold are produced annually by the 17 industrial mines in Burkina Faso. Cotton is no longer the main export good thanks to gold production. In Burkina Faso, Moscow is gaining sympathy from the populace while the previous colonial power, France, is demonized. Since the September 30th coup that brought Captain Ibrahim Troor into power, Burkinators have repeatedly demonstrated waving flags of Russia, a country with which they want their new leaders to intensify relations. As earlier mentioned, the gold mining industry is the backbone of Burkina Faso's economy. However, there has been very little compensation to the miners as well as the country as a whole from this activity as all the gold gets exported, reasons why the current government seeks to ensure that the gold is processed by the country with no need for exportation. Yet it is known that there is much work to be done to improve this sector. With over 430,000 individuals directly employed at more than 440 mine sites, artisanal and small-scale mining serves as the main source of income for a sizable portion of the population of the nation.
The great majority of persons working in the ASGM industry lack both formal education and alternative employment opportunities that would pay them enough to support themselves. In Burkina Faso, small-scale and artisanal miners frequently use mercury to extract the gold from the ore. Although most miners are uninformed of the harmful effects this practice has on human health and the environment, this is one of the biggest obstacles preventing them from switching to mercury-free techniques. The military government of Burkina Faso is attempting to process more of its gold domestically in order to maintain control over the nation's primary source of income in the wake of a decline in output. As the government fought a vast Islamist insurgency, attacks on the mining sector increased and production dropped 15% last year. The country in West Africa, which now exports the vast bulk of its gold, is aiming to construct a refinery in order to strengthen her economy. Several European nations, most notably Russia, which has recently been a staunch ally and supporter of the Ibrahim Troll regime, have welcomed this. Following a decline in output, the military government of Burkina Faso is attempting to process more of its gold locally in order to maintain control over the nation's main source of income. As the government fought a massive Islamist insurgency that increasingly targeted the mining sector, production dropped 15% last year. The country in West Africa, which exports the great bulk of its gold, is currently aiming to construct a refinery to increase the value it derives from mining the metal. Interim President Ibrahim Tror stated, the refinery is necessary, during an interview with the national station Radia Diffusion Television du Burkina. One of the suggested adjustments to the industry is one that we need to see to imperatively. In September, Tror led the second coup in six months and vowed to intensify the war against the terrorists who hold nearly half the country. In April, Russia's Nordgold stopped operations at the Toparco concession, claiming that the lives of the workers were in risk. Six people were killed in an attack on a convoy leaving the Bangu mine owned by Endeavor Mining Corp in August. What? According to Tror, the government wants to tighten security so that closed mines can reopen. He added that the handling of mining waste is also a very important issue and that a revision of the mining code will be due soon. In 2020, 37% of Burkina Faso's total exports were made up of gold. Output was estimated at 58 tons last year, down from 68 tons a year earlier. A fifth of mining royalties collected by the state and 1% of mining company revenues go into a government-managed fund that finances development projects in local mining communities and elsewhere. In his speech to the youth of Burkina Faso, Ibrahim often referred to the nation's first military president, Thomas Sankara, and quoted from the former general's own comments. The young people were reminded of Sankara's prophecy from 1987, when he said, kill Sankara and thousands of Sankaras will be born, when receiving information from his circle about the coming threat of his death via a coup d'etat. Only 20 years after his assassination did Radio France Internationale, the leading French international media channel, report on it. Traoré emphasized the often overlooked contributions of Russia and Africa in the struggle against fascism in Italy and the Nazis in Germany during World War II, alongside Western nations like the UK, France, and the United States, in a speech with strong themes of historical remembrance and acknowledgement. He bemoaned the fact that historical accounts usually downplay these countries' crucial contributions, maintaining a skewed perspective on the past that ignores Africa's crucial contribution. As Ibrahim Tror stirred up intense feelings, he reassured the young Burkinabe community of his persistent resolve and plans to recapture the nation's gold fields and make sure that gold extraction benefits the people first and foremost. He said that the jihadists and rebel insurgencies in the nation were going to be fought not just by arms but by development. In a clear demand for a paradigm shift among African leaders, Traoré exhorted his contemporaries to fend off imperialist pressure. We African heads of state must stop acting like puppets that dance whenever the imperialists pull the strings, he said. By the end of 2022, he said, my government and I launched calls for volunteers, resulting in nearly 100,000 more civilian forces enlisting. Several hundred of these brave people have already given their life in order to protect those of their countrymen. Trora remarked, 
What I cannot understand is why other African politicians, who offer no support, stoop so low as to call these heroic men and women militias. They would have been praised as patriots in other places. Troar also stressed the critical importance of food self-sufficiency for African nations. He praised Russian President Vladimir Putin's announcement of sending free grain to six African nations after the collapse of the Black Sea deal, while simultaneously framing it as a wake-up call for African leaders. At the next forum, we must not come here without having ensured food self-sufficiency for our peoples, he asserted. As he concluded, Troar cited Thomas Sankara's powerful quote from his 1984 UN address, the slave who is unable to assume his revolt does not deserve to be pitied, along with Sankara's well-known epitaph, fatherland or death, we shall triumph. These words resonated like a call to arms, quickly spreading through social media channels and touching the hearts and spirits of young Africans.